Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, thank you for joining this amazing webinar. I am Dr. Hiro Borja, and I am the Director of Grants and Entrepreneurship for the uh, Statewide Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey. Uh, sorry, that's my teams that keeps going on. Uh, so thank you, Janet uh, Robertson, for this amazing uh, collaboration. We understand the importance of this law and the impact it will have on our chamber members, our familia, um, especially our restaurant owners, right? So we're looking forward to this conversation on, on this ban of the single use of carry-out bags, uh, polystyrene foam food service products, and, pla and plastic straws by request only effective May 4th, 2022. So with that being said, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet and I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Janet. Good morning. I'm Janet Robertson. I'm with the uh, New Jersey Business Action Center. We're an agency of the New Jersey Department of State. First slide, please, Steve. We're very delighted to have this opportunity to speak with you this morning. Um, I will be first covering a few um, of the resources which the New Jersey Business Action Center offers for uh, business owners, all free and confidential. And I think uh, very worth sharing to this large group. Um, we'll also be covering during, can you go back, Steve, please? We'll also be go covering uh, business compliance with the new law, the law implementation, including timelines, facts, who's covered and enforcement and all our outreach programs. I'll be joined today by Aaron Jensen, who's an environmental specialist with the Department of Environmental Protection, and Joanne Jamendon, Executive Director of the New Jersey Clean Communities Council. We at the New Jersey Business Action Center are dedicated to helping businesses prepare for the ban. This is a ban on plastic and paper carryout bags and polystyrene foam food service products. Next, please. We like to say we're from the state government and we're here to help your business. We're a business first resource to help you get answers from government agencies, direct you to appropriate officials or contacts, facilitate meetings and follow-ups with regulatory agencies and more, all at no cost and strictly confidential. We're a business advocacy team dedicated to solving problems and maximizing growth opportunities. On our live chat on our website, our business experts answers your quest, any question that you may have Monday through Friday, eight to five and on our helpline at 1-800-JERSEY-7. We are both English and Spanish speaking. Next, please. So for over 30 years, we have served the New Jersey business community, and we have three offices devoted to business advocacy. The first is really project-oriented, the Office of Business Advocacy. We help with real estate site searches, finding the right location, whether you are growing or maybe you're consolidating due to the COVID economic uh, fallout um, or permitting at state and municipal levels. Um, then our Office of Small Business Advocacy is much more transactionally oriented, helping small businesses navigate business registration, tax compliance, financing options, certification and licensing requirements, and helping with business and marketing plans. Finally, our Office of Export Promotion helps companies, both large and small, tap into global business resources finding new markets, creating an export plan, and, admit it, and we also administer the SBA STEP program, which has over a million dollars of funding every year to help defray the cost of uh, putting together an export plan and attending trade uh, shows and trade missions, translations, and other functions. So we, we do, really do encourage you to reach out to us if you're interested in, in developing your business in this area. Next, please. Next, please. How can the back help you? Think of us as your connector, connecting you with technical assistance. 
identifying critical access to capital, local, state, and federal grant and loan programs, providing guidelines for new rules and regulations like we're doing today, clarifying state mandated employee benefit programs, identifying licensing and certification requirements. Next, please. We can connect you to all the state departments and agencies and outside organizations that can directly answer your questions, solve your problems, and provide you with resources and technical assistance. These are just a few of the many government agencies. Next, please. So on our website, business.nj.gov, we, we have many resources to help you to plan, start, operate, and grow your business. We have a robust search function that can help you find immediately find targeted answers to your questions. We have such things as business starter kits. Maybe that can help jumpstart your development with a food truck or online commerce, cleaning service, or a restaurant. We can help you create a business plan. We can help you file an account for important license renewals, tax statements, reporting forms. And there are opportunities to contract with the state. And we can go through a step-by-step -step process for many opportunities with a wide variety of business sectors. So there are over 100 FAQs detailing important state agency services for businesses. And on our live chat, which you can find on the website, business.nj.gov, our business experts will answer your questions Monday through Friday, eight to five. Next, please. So let me go briefly through this law and then Aaron um, from the Department of Environmental Protection will provide much more detail. We, we um, suggest that you put your any questions that you have in the chat and I will be answering these questions. And then at the end, um, we'll have a Q and A. Uh, depending on how much time we have left. So on November 4th of 2020, Governor Phil Murphy signed this new law that becomes effective next May, 2022. On May 4th, 2022, all stores and food service businesses are banned from providing or selling single use plastic carryout bags and polystyrene foam food service products to customers. In addition, single use paper carryout bags will be banned from being provided or sold by grocery stores that are 2,500 square feet or larger. On November 4th, 2021, next week, single use plastic straws may only be provided on a by customer request basis. This new law supersedes all previous local, county, or city ordinances that pertain to single-use plastic or paper carryout bags or polystyrene foam food service products. Next, please. So why are we talking about this now? Well, we want to give all retail stores and food service businesses time to repair, prepare. We recognize your need to use up your existing inventory because all plastic carryout bags, regardless of thickness, and polystyrene foam food service products will be banned with some exceptions, and Aaron will go through the exceptions. This law provides for our business action center, the DEP and New Jersey Clean Communities to conduct awareness campaigns and provide resources to help businesses comply. We also are scheduling roundtables such as these to prepare business and customers. And we would very much like you to refer any organizations that you think would benefit from our virtual roundtable. Next, please. So where can you find information? On our website at business.nj.gov slash bags slash plastic dash ban dash law and on the DEP website you will find links to online resources to assist you to comply, such as FAQs, implementation timeline, a chart of establishments, and a link to the law. 
We're proud to announce that we have now launched the Vendor Clearinghouse of manufacturers and distributors of reusable and paper carryout bags that meet the requirements of the law. Next, please. The Vendor Clearinghouse can be found on our website. It is a courtesy list of wholesale vendors of environmentally sound products. This is both a resource for businesses to identify sources for purchase and a business opportunity for vendors to showcase your products. And we encourage you to come on to our site, register your company and your products. So these will, the products need to be those which are allowed under the law. These are reusable bags that meet these standards. You can see the list of materials here. And in coming soon will be, a, will be resources to help you identify food service product alternatives to polystyrene foam. Next, please. The partner agencies and organizations working on this outreach effort are the New Jersey BAC, the New Jersey DEP, which is responsible for the overall implementation of the law, including the adoption of implementing regulations, and the New Jersey Clean Communities Council, which is responsible for developing and implementing a statewide public information and education program. Next, please. So for information updates, please come to our website, whether they're updates on the plastic ban and polystyrene foam food service product ban, whether it's to visit the vendor clearinghouse and register your company or purchase products, find, find resources and vendors where you can purchase your products. We're not actually an e-commerce site. Um, or to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter, which so you can stay up to date on news affecting your business. This is all at New Jersey, our business.newjersey.gov, nj.gov. And you can also speak to our business experts on a live chat Monday through Friday, eight to five, and at 1-800-JERSEY-7, where there are both English and Spanish speaking experts to help you. Next, please. And now I'd like to introduce Aaron Jensen, environmental specialist with the Division of Solid and Hazardous Waste, the Department of Environmental Protection. Aaron. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Janet. So let me just bring up my presentation here. All right, so good morning, everyone. My name is Aaron Jensen. Um, as Janet said, I'm from the DEP with the Division of Solid and Hazardous Waste. Today, I'm gonna to go over some of the details of the law, um, the four different products it covers, and then some additional information, plus some stuff that we have on our website that's available for everyone to download, print, um, however you need it. We're gonna start off um, talking about the different bag bans. Um, so beginning May 4th of 2022, the law will uh, prohibit, it's all stores, and that's all retail establishments, food service businesses, grocery stores, anywhere where you would normally get a plastic bag or carry out any sort of item from selling or providing customers with single-use plastic carryout bags. And that is for all thicknesses of bags, all type of plastic bags. And you'll see here, we do have a definition from the law. It's pretty simple, just a carryout bag made of plastic that's not reusable. So in addition to banning the single-use plastic bags, there's also going to be a ban on single-use paper bags. However, this will only affect grocery stores that are equal to or larger than 2,500 square feet. All other retail and food service businesses and small grocery stores will also be able to use paper bags. Um, and you'll see here we have a definition um, pretty much the same for paper bags. As I said, uh, the plastic bag ban applies to all types of retail establishments. These are a couple of ways uh, we define uh, different business types in the law. Um, and again, this will all be found on our website. Um, if you want to use a bag or give customers bags um, or sell bags um, at your store or, or restaurant, they will need to meet the definition of a reusable carryout bag. Um, to meet the definition, the bags will have to meet all three of these um, rules here. So I'm gonna go over them now. 
So the first one is that the bag must be made of polypropylene fabric, PET non-woven fabric, nylon cloth or hemp, or some another washable fabric. Um, so what we mean by washable is either hand wash or machine wash. The bags must also have stitched handles. That includes traditional or ultrasonic stitching, but does not include adhesive. And lastly, the bags must be designed and manufactured for multiple reuses, uh, which we define as a minimum of 125 uses. So if you are going to purchase bags uh, for use, uh, just you, it is up to you to make sure that they do meet this definition. There are some exemptions to both of the bag bands. Um, these include things like the bags used to contain or wrap uncooked meat, fish, and poultry, uh, the smaller bags used to package loose items like fruits and veggies, candy, greeting cards, small hardware, um, those smaller bags. Um, bags used to contain live animals such as fish or insects, and also the bags used for food sliced or prepared to order, um, typically like a deli counter. Also, um, laundry and dry cleaning or garment bags, um, the smaller bags provided by a pharmacy to carry prescriptions, and also bags that are typically used for newspaper delivery. Uh, we do have the ability through rule regulation or guidance to add additional types of bags to this list if you find it necessary. Um, if, you, if you think there is something that needs to be added, um, you can always reach out to us and um, it is a kind of a long process but we can always look into it. So also beginning May 4th, 2022 is going to be a ban on polystyrene foam food service products. Now this ban not only um, bans from selling or providing it to customers at those food service businesses, but you also won't be able to purchase these items in stores. And you'll see, for example, here we have the polystyrene foam Food service product definition includes things like styrofoam, uh, polystyrene foam plates, um, beverage cups, meat and vegetable trays, cutlery, egg cartons. Those are just some examples of the most common uses. And you'll see us say polystyrene foam a lot. Typically you would know that as styrofoam, but that is a, it's a brand name. So polystyrene foam is just the generic name. Uh, the, this portion of the law also has some exemptions, except these exemptions are only good for two years after the implementation date. So these will go until May 4th, 2024. Afterwards, they will automatically be added back to the law unless uh, we do extend it. We have the ability to extend these exemptions for a period of one year. Um, but again, after that year, they will automatically expire and uh, you will no longer be able to use them. This is for mainly research purposes. Um, some of these items that are not currently um, very good alternatives. So we are giving the market some additional time to meet our, um, our new standards. So these products that are going to be exempted until May 4th, 2024 are disposable long handled polystyrene foam soda spoons, the small two ounce or less portion cups, uh, the trays used under raw meat and fish, uh, typically at a butcher counter, um, any food prepackaged by a manufacturer, um, such things as ramen, you know, that typically come in um, a, styro a polystyrene foam cup. So anything that's coming direct from a manufacturer, We'll have that exemption. And then again, we do have the ability to add to this list if we see necessary uh, through rules or guidance. Um, as well as on top of the exemptions, there's also a waiver option for polystyrene foam. You will have to meet one of these two scenarios and then apply for a waiver with all the proof that you do meet these scenarios. Uh, the waiver forms are live on our website. Um, so the situations are one, there is no feasible and commercially available alternative for a specific polystyrene foam food service product. 
or the person or business has less than $500,000 in gross annual income, and there is no reasonably affordable commercially available alternative. So again, the waivers are going to be for a specific polystyrene foam product, not for a whole business. So if you are want to apply for a waiver for multiple different product types, you'll have to submit multiple waiver forms. Uh, if you are approved for a waiver, um, it'll only be for a period of one year. Um, you can, we can extend that by an additional year, um, but you will have to have some additional written documentation um, submitted to us. And after that, you'll have to reapply every year. Uh, so moving on, we're going to talk about the straws. Uh, this becomes effective this November 4th, 2021, so next week. Um, and the rule is it'll, for food service businesses, you will only be able to give a straw to a customer upon request. So uh, basically, uh, if you go to a restaurant or any other food service businesses, you won't automatically be given a straw. Uh, you'll have to ask for one um, if you choose to want a straw. All those food service businesses are required to keep a supply of straws on hand for when customers ask for them. Um, and this, unlike the polystyrene foam ban, does not stop the sale of these products in store. So you will still be able to go into a store and purchase single use plastic straws um, or and, and products prepackaged with straws like juice boxes. Um, the, this law will not affect that. So this law will supersede and preempt all municipal and county rules, regulations, or ordinances. Um, so if uh, the town or county where you are currently has rules um, or ordinances about any of the products we've talked to today, once our law becomes effective, um, it will take over um, any of your municipal or county rules or laws. Uh, so those programs will end and ours will take over. Uh, this is something you can find online on our website. This is just a timeline of all the events um, in order of when things become effective or when things end. We also have a chart on our website. We uh, list all different types of businesses and then the four different products that we've discussed today and which ones are effective for that business type. This is not an exhaustive list. There are plenty of other business types out there. Um, this is just an example of some that are uh, directly mentioned or that we've received questions on and it can always grow. Um, but yeah, so this is just a, a simple chart that you can find online. So we're gonna move a little bit into enforcement. Uh, there's two different enforcement programs going on. So the first one is for the bag bands and also polystyrene foam. Um, enforcement power has been given not only to the DEP, but to counties through the County Environmental Health Act or CEHA agents, and also to municipalities. Uh, we have reached out to all the mayors, letting them know that they were given um, enforcement power if they choose to use it. Um, that would be up to them. So in most cases, uh, enforcement will be done at a local level and then be raised up through the county and then the state if necessary. Um, and then for the straw specifically, the Department of Health um, has been given the power to enforce that provision. Uh, there are also some penalties laid out in the law. Uh, so at your first offense, it will be a warning. After that, it's $1,000 per day for your second offense and $5,000 per day for, all, for your third and any subsequent violations. Um, on our website, you can also find a long list of FAQs. Again, we're always adding to this list um, and it is printable. Um, this is just some examples of some questions we have on there. For example, uh, can establishments require their customers to purchase these reusable bags? Um, no, you wouldn't be able to require them to, but if you're going to sell a bag, it will need to be a reusable bag. Uh, customers can continue to bring in their own bags um, and those don't have to be any of our definitions because they're, they're bringing them in themselves and not being given by the store. 
Um, some other examples are, for example, self-service areas um, where you have other things like salt and pepper and utensils, napkins, um, and also for drive-through areas, if the by request only rule for straws applies to them? And the answer would be yes. Um, it, it affects all portions of a food service business. So straws would not just be given out um, all the time, they would have to be asked for. And there are multiple, many, many other FAQs um, on our website. So here is a link to our website. Um, where you'll find all of this um, plus more and also a copy of the full legislation. Uh, you can also email us if you have questions specific to the law at singleuseplastics at dep.nj.gov. As Janet had mentioned, you can also go to the New Jersey Business Action Center for a lot of information about businesses specifically. And I also recommend uh, using their, their live chat feature Monday to Friday from eight to five. And as you'll hear after me, uh, you can also go to the New Jersey Clean Communities website um, for information on their public education campaign. Um, and that she will, jo Joanne will also have some additional um, links uh, to different websites. So that is it for me. So I am going to pass it along to Joanne Jamenton. Joanne, take it away. Thank you, Erin, and good morning, everybody. Um, this is the testing portion of the webinar. Oh, just kidding. I just wanted to get everybody's attention. Um, so I know you're all a little overwhelmed. There was a lot of information on regulations and laws, um, but primarily we're really all here to help you. And you, before I even get started, I, I really want you to know that. Um, so feel free to circle back with any of us um, over the next six months to ask questions. So, good morning. My name is Joanne Jamendon. I am the executive director of the New Jersey Clean Communities Council. And I'm sure many of you are out there saying, what is the New Jersey Clean Communities Council? So I'm gonna take a moment um, because I think you're gonna to wanna to know who we are because we're all about partnerships. Um, Janet and the Business Action Center are all about connections. We're all about partners. Um, so the New Jersey Clean Communities Council is a statewide nonprofit organization that deals with litter abatement. Um, who isn't about getting rid of litter? Hopefully no one. So who wouldn't wanna partner with somebody that wants to do that? Hopefully no one. Um, we provide annual grant funding to every county and every municipality in New Jersey. So I'm not sure if um, your chamber is a statewide chamber, but I can pretty much guarantee you that any business that's on this call, their town is getting money from clean communities. Every county and town designates a clean communities coordinator. Why is that important? The only way to make partnerships is, you know, we have a hierarchy. Um, so I can put you in touch with the county coordinator, the municipal coordinator, all throughout New Jersey. I'm super happy to say that the Hudson County Improvement Authority is the agency we work with in Hudson County, and I know they're on this call today. So thanks for being here, guys. Um, and our agency or our program promotes litter cleanup, education, and enforcement. So we have mini grant programs, we adopt highways, we clean up, we enforce, and we try to you know, tell people how bad litter is for the environment and for wildlife. One of the changes we've made this year is we have added Bag Up NJ Outreach to as an allowable um, expenditure under clean communities. So if you have clean communities funds, which everyone does, and if you so choose to use it to buy bags or to outreach, to do outreach, you can. So where does the money come from? Um, it's actually a tax on litter generating items. So if you have, if you manufacture, if you distribute or sell any of these 15 items, there is a small fee or a tax put on these and they all go into a fund. Um, that fund is then annually distributed out to the counties and the towns. This year we gave out $20.7 million. The majority of that 
money goes to municipalities, about 80% of it goes to municipalities. 10% goes to counties and the state. And then we get our organization, the Clean Communities Council gets $375,000 annually to help run the program. Um, one little other infomercial, we also run an adopt a highway and adopt a beach program. So if anyone is interested in adopting a highway near you, um, go to our website, njclean.org and um, look at the application. It's pretty simple. And we put your sign out and you have to clean up like four times a year. And this isn't just for businesses. You can be a government agency. You can be a family. Um, we have seven, over 70 um, roads adopted throughout New Jersey right now. So back to why we're here, New Jersey's legislation. Um, it is the most progressive bag ban law in the country. A lot of people um, say, oh, well, New Jersey's a little late to the game. Um, we're the eighth state that implemented a bag ban. However, we are the only one that has implemented a paper bag um, ban in grocery stores. And I think a lot of stores are actually happy about that um, because other states that have implemented just plastic, it hasn't really reduced um, folks' reliance on bags from the stores. It hasn't really increased the use of reusable bags. But I just want everyone to keep in mind the main reason that our legislators um, developed this law was to prevent litter. Well, we do litter cleanups and which we've been doing under this um, program for the last 25 years. Most common item we find in any cleanup anywhere is plastic bags um, as well as straws. So um, it's a big initiative and I'm, I'm really happy to be here to talk about this. We have actually 188 days. I did not change the slide, so I apologize. Um, and that's important if you're a store owner, operator, restaurant, because you need to not only use up the inventory you have now, you need to buy reusable bags, at least have them in the store to offer for sale. Um, with COVID, with supply chain issues, it may take you this long to buy bags and get them printed with your logo or your branding on them. So don't wait. Under this specific legislation, um, the New Jersey Clean Commun Communities Council is getting an additional $500,000 for the next three years to do a statewide education and outreach program. That's kind of why we're here today, right? Um, establish partnerships, hopefully with um, your chamber, uh, other stakeholders, trade organizations, businesses, governments, and even the media to get the word out um, we will be doing and have done already press releases, newsletters. Um, we're gearing up to do some paid advertising and PSAs. And also we're involved in doing um, limited distribution of free reusable carry up bags, which I'll talk about more. Most importantly, um, our mission is to do a statewide education and outreach program. So we have developed a few campaigns and we're gonna be sharing that branding with you. Um, going back to the reminder that this all came from the need to get rid of plastics and a need to curb litter. Our oceans are getting filled with litter um, and, and plastics just don't go away. They just break down into smaller particles. They get eaten by fish and turtles. Then we eat the fish and then we become contaminated. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, this is going to lead to not only a cleaner environment, but a healthier one. So what are our campaigns? We have two that we've launched in the last five months. We have Bag Up NJ, which is pretty simple message. Bring your own bags when you go shopping and skip the straw. Um, no, November 4th, which I believe is next Friday, um, the only way you're going to get a plastic straw when you go into a restaurant or a food establishment is to request one. Or if you so choose or you can just skip the straw altogether. This is our website. Um, most important click through on here is the downloads page. We have developed a ton of free downloads that I'm going to go through really quickly that you can take, steal, post, 
add your own branding, pretend you came up with it yourself, be a hero. Um, that's what we're here for. So bag up NJ logo. This is trademarked, it is copyrighted, and it's on our website for you to use. So why do we want you to do that? Because we want this campaign to be a statewide campaign. The same thing that you see in Cape May or Salem County is the same thing we want you to see in Hudson County and Sussex County. Anywhere you go, when you see Bag Up NJ, we want you to think, I have to bring my reusable bags. We have social media and web banners, cling artwork. Um, a lot of people go, what's cling artwork? We have a lot of partitions in the last 18 months. So maybe that's valuable real estate um, stores can use to do advertising and to get messaging to their, um, the folks that are going in their store or going to the restaurant or what have you. We have sandwich board signs. If you're only um, advertising space is your sidewalk, we took that into consideration. So we developed a sandwich board sign, taglines and flyers. I encourage everyone here. Um, we've been working, we have worked with the food council membership, convenience stores. If there are other stores out there that have certain requests or needs that are unique to your industry, give me an email, give me a call and say, this is what we would like to have. And we'll work it out and put it on our website for everyone to share. So I promise I really, I'll go through this pretty quickly. This is some examples of what's on our website now and different social media posts. This is the example of our sandwich board artwork. We also developed a shopping list. Um, this was as a result of my interactions with shoppers or and people doing bag giveaway programs. And they go, oh, I have bags. I just forget to bring them. So we decided to create a shopping list and add that as the number one item. Hopefully you look at your list before you go into the store. We also developed a skip the straw campaign, which I mentioned before. We are in the process of making a bilingual um, flyer and cling, which is you'll see here, we're just working uh, to tweak some of the spacing because I think um, the messaging or the picture, the graphic gets lost behind this. But these are um, will be on our website as well, at least this version by the end of the week. We have flyers. So if you want to share um, information with your employees and you're not sure what we said, because we're saying a lot of information, just go to the website, print out a flyer, cut and paste portions of it, put it in a newsletter, um, add it to your website. We're trying to make this as easy as you know, we can for you to share the messaging. Um, this message is more for businesses that have to do compliance. Uh, the Business Action Center developed two great flyers, one in English and one in Spanish. They are on our website. Like I said, download them, cut and paste, take her away. We are also offering a business partnership program. Maybe you have sustainability funds um, that you need to spend this year or next year and you want to participate, but you don't really want to go through the process of buying bags. You don't want to know how to give them away. You don't really have contacts um, with the media. Um, give us a call, give us an email, and we'll do a partnership. You give us some money, we buy bags, we put your logo, our logo, we design a bag giveaway program to your liking, whether it's um, within the downtown area that your business is, maybe a one day event, or you wanna work with the local food kitchen, whatever it is you wanna do. And then we get the media, we get the local officials and we take it all from there. With It's like a one-stop shop for you, but you get all the credit because you, spent the money and bought the bags. Um, this is some examples of recent bag giveaways we, we have done in Asbury Park and on the Cape May Loose Ferry. Um, and those bag giveaways were funded separately than our money, which we actually just um, received our first set of funds this month. Um, so we will be buying bags and doing limited free distribution of bags. Um, so before everybody starts calling and asking me to send them a couple hundred bags, um, please note that we are limited to working solely in overburdened communities and with seniors. 
Um, we have the holidays coming up. I am working with a bunch of organizations in the city of Newark um, in Camden, and we're donating bags as part of their food giveaway program. Um, but if you know any other establishments or communities that need bags, especially in conjunction with um, a food giveaway program, that would be great to have those resources. So wrapping it up, I promise, what can you do to help prepare, um, encourage bag giveaways? That's a, that low hanging fruit, as I'd like to call it. That's the, if you give people a bag and tell them about the law, that's, you know, the simplest way to get it going. I personally believe, you know, Janet and Aaron and myself can only do so many presentations. You have the contact every day with your employees, with your customers, with your staff. Um, and that's the way that we can spread that message. You tell two people and they tell two people and so on. And if you give them a, a, a bag to get started, hopefully that's gonna start changing their habits way ahead of time. Um, share your campaign message. Thank you to Hudson, I'm sorry, this is Mercer County and Somerset County. They are um, have been advertising at their ballparks all season long. Middlesex County starting next month will be advertising on billboards along 287. Once again, using their Clean Communities Grant Funds. I know Hudson County is busy sharing um, the skip the straw message on the path trains and various other locations throughout Hudson County. So thank you, Hudson County. I'm waiting for a picture so I can share that. And finally, your homework is to connect with the New Jersey Clean Communities Council. Help promote both of our campaigns, include all this information in your newsletter and social media if you have it, do a reusable bag promotion, and if you need to, partner with us. If you have businesses in your downtown or part of your organization that are already green, already doing sustainable um, projects, highlight them. And people always want to, you know, once they get recognition, people want to, you know, copy what they're doing and do the same thing. And lastly, go to njclean.org, which is our sister website. Sign up for our monthly newsletter. It talks all about our litter programs and Bag Up NJ programs. And these are some of the um, articles that we've had published already. Um, it's just a handful of the many. We've been getting a lot of good press and I get a lot of emails every day. So lastly, here's my name, here's my email. Um, I work for New Jersey Clean Communities, available all the time. Give me a call, give me a shout send up a smoke signal, um, reach me any which way. And I think now is the time that Janet and Aaron um, and myself will answer your questions live and in person. Thank you. That was such a great presentation, Joanne. Um, I'm a little been, wordy, I'm sorry. But. It's really vital information. And I think people are always so happy to hear about resources to help them and help their communities. So I've answered a lot of questions in the chat, but we're very happy to answer any other questions you may have live. So um, please know, or please, please, please let us know, either by speaking or by putting something in the chat. And then, um, Jairo, I'd like to turn it back over to you. Sure, no problem. Uh, I did have a, qu have a question sent to me privately. Will any of these presentations be available as a PDF version to either downloaded from the site or, or can be can you guys send that to us to disseminate that info to the chamber members um, so that that was a question that was posted. yes we're happy to provide those for you okay sounds good all right so uh so you send and, we're, and if and we know you're recording and if you want to place the recording on your social media or website or However else you may want to communicate and have this information available, we're happy for you to do that as well. Thank you so much. We were trying to live stream, but we were having technical difficulties. So we're going to go with plan B. We'll just post it on our social media socials and then and send out. So so thank you. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, I can't believe there aren't any questions. This is like the biggest piece of legislation that affects every business and every resident and every shopper in New Jersey. So you have to have a question, something. No? Uh, 
Oh, uh, uh, Joanne, uh, Kim, Kimmy was asking what um, what languages as far as some of the material, English, Spanish, or other than English? Spanish? Um, currently, like I said, we just received our funding, but we will be um, translating all of our stuff into at least five languages. Um, I don't have them right in front of me, but our, our effort, you know, is going to be to try to reach every um, resident in New Jersey, regardless of what language they speak. Got it. Uh, Kimmy also has a question. Are businesses required to offer reusable bags for sale? You would say when, it, when the time comes. In May. No, yeah, uh, no, they're not required to give out reusable oh. bags or sell them. Um, it's just that if they are going to give out bags or sell them, they will have to meet the reusable bag uh, definition. So they don't have to do that. But if they do, those are the bags they'll have to use. Got it. Okay. Great. I'm just scrolling through the chat. Uh, Johnny did a great job answering on, on the fly. So it's great. <laughs> um, no, 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 no questions besides the one, the one I, I got privately and the, and the one I saw from Kimmy in the chat. So I'll give it another minute or so to see if anyone has questions. Either you could type it in the chat or you could more than happy to unmute yourselves. So you know, we have a, we have a nice crowd here. So I think it'd be all right. Yeah, I, I didn't see the chat. Um, but if there's anything you think is important to mention, only because if people watch this, um, sure. it might be important to answer the questions. So Anne, can you go over again the cross promotion um, opportunity between a business and clean communities, how that works? You have yeah, the started, artwork and you have the source for the bags, right? Yeah, we started um, the business partnership um, because obviously we don't have enough funding to buy bags for every New Jerseyan. So we tried to figure out a way how to get bags um, in people's hands without having to buy them. So this seemed like the perfect fit. A lot of companies nowadays have a sustainability um, motto and they, they wanna do more things in the sustainability area. And they just might not have the people to help them do that with boots on the ground. So this seemed like a perfect way, you know, for that funding to be used for this purpose. We have, again, you know, every county and every town has a clean communities coordinator. So if we need folks at an event to give bags away, you know, it's it's getting, you know, making a phone call or two and, you know, we can get volunteers from all over the place in a matter of days. So it's a win-win for everybody. Folks get reusable bags, companies get their recognition, um, clean communities get some recognition for the volunteers that work so hard every day cleaning up litter and making New Jersey cleaner and greener, so. So, so you have um, a source for bags, you have artwork, a restaurant or another company comes to you and says, okay, we'll cover the cost for bags. And what we would like is we would like our name and logo on the bags with the Bag Up New Jersey. And by the way, would you, be, would you have the personnel to set up a bag giveaway in our town uh, maybe on such and such a month or date or whatever. Maybe it's our restaurant's anniversary. And we would like to really do something for our town and kind of market our company, our, in our restaurant. And can you participate with us? So it's, it's like a coordinated effort between a business and a nonprofit to achieve both marketing and environmental sustainability goals. Is that correct? Who needs me? We got Janet. Yes, that was okay. it. Well, well, I just want to position, I just wanted to show how a company can position it to um, in, to really increase their reach and awareness and help the community and the environment and be a good corporate citizen. Right. And and we have the connections also within the, the media, which I think is always um, an added benefit because we have a press release that we can write up and, and obviously provide quotes from folks in your business. Um, we know who to send it out to. And when you dial it back into you know, creating a litter-free environment, um, it tends to get people's attention. No one's against that. 
So you get a little more response, maybe at a, um, at a, a giveaway program from the media, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But thank you. Uh, there's two questions in chat. Um, thank you, Kimmy. Thank you, Antonio. Um, have any good alternatives been thought of uh, to use for carrying out messy takeout containers filled with food? I don't know. It's really a question for Aaron. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we have, uh, we are not the ones selling the product. So it comes down to what's available in the marketplace. Um, I know um, the vendor clearinghouse on, uh, from the BAC that Jana had spoke about has all different types of reusable bags that's going to be up there. Um, and you really have to decide look at what's available and what's best for your business. Everyone's going to need a different type of thing that's better for them, whether it's made of a different material, it's heat resistant, or if it's made, you know, it really depends on your business and what's fit to you. Um, and that's where I think the vendor clearinghouse comes in. It just gives options for you to consider um, when buying these bags. Um, and it's all kind of in one place. Um, so yeah, and again, these bags do have to be washable, um, either hand wash or machine washable. Uh, so I think that'll help with the, like if, if it gets messy, um, we will require them to be washable. So hopefully that um, will help as well. Thank you. Karen. Aaron, do you want to talk about the biodegradable bags? I know we get that question a lot and I, it's, it's more, I know DEP is dealing with that. So if you want to just share where you are in that process. Yeah, I mean, we've gotten some questions about some alternative bag types. Um, they look similar to single use plastic bags, but there's actually no plastic in them. Some are biodegradable, some are dissolvable. Um, it varies. Uh, we're still uh, looking into those bags um, with our science and research, research department. Um, and so guidance may come out at some point that these bags will be allowable uh, since they're not plastic or maybe not. Um, it really depends on, uh, on some of our research that we're doing. Um, that's kind of, so right for right now, it's still only the reusable bags that are allowable. Or paper, unless you're a large grocery store. And if I can, a lot of people send me emails about garbage bags. Um, what are we going to do? You know, if you're taking away our garbage bags, how am I going to throw it? Um, we're not. Um, touching garbage bags. Anybody can go to any store and still buy plastic bags of any size for your small waste basket, for your big garbage can. Um, they're just not going to be offered, you know, via the merchant any longer after as of May 4th. Exactly. Yeah. It only affects carry out bags. So things like um, garbage bags will not be affected by the law. Thank you. There's one last question in the interest of time. Um, how is plastic defined? Yeah. So um, the, the definition in the law for plastic, sorry if it's uh, loud, I have people bleep blowing outside. It's okay. Um, the definition for plastic is a synthetic material made from linking monomers through a chemical reaction to create an organic polymer chain that can be molded or extruded at high heat into various solid forms, retaining their defined shapes during the life cycle and after disposal. And you can find that in the law, which is on our website. Um, it's on like the, the second page, um, if you wanna look into it a little further. That was also, pretty impressive at 10 o'clock in the morning, Aaron. Well, I'm reading it. I did not, <laughs> I did not memorize that definition. Uh, it is it's a little too scientific for me to memorize. I will copy it though and put it in the chat if that's helpful. That's fine, you can do that. Um, thank you so much. There you go, yeah. All right, anyone has any other questions? We do have another 90 seconds or so, uh, trying, to, <laughs> trying to keep it on time, right? Till 10 o'clock, so, so thank you. Um, thank you so much, Joanne, Janet. And Aaron, amazing job answering um, these questions. So, and thank you for this amazing information. And I think it'll be great um, for our members uh, to to know and be informed as, as we get closer to May fourth. So, Hydro, I just um, I just want to know how soon information will be available in Spanish. 
with part of the law coming out next, you know, going into a, a force next week, the 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 plus the straw yeah. thing. Like I know I know a number of uh, restaurants owned by Latinos oh. that are not aware so, of this. Kimmy, there is a flyer in Spanish, and you can get that from uh, this the. Uh, statewide Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Jairo has been provided with that. And I'm sure he has distributed it out to his members already, but I'm sure he'd be happy to send that to you. That Thank flyer you. is also link is on Joanne's website, as she said in her presentation. It's on our website and it's on the DEP's website. And I've just given you the link to the DEP's website three times. So really, I, I encourage you to please dig in I know you have a lot of questions and you really are interested in this stuff. And that's great because we need people like you to get this word out and you can really help us by reviewing the FAQs, finding the, the flyer, downloading the flyer and distributing the flyer. Um, the flyer is both in English and Spanish. It, it, it really summarizes the law quite quite effectively, I believe. It's been blessed by all our attorneys. So it's very accurate. And the second page of the flyer has a list of all the exemptions and so and the waiver process, et cetera. So I think it really can answer all your questions. It's both in English and it's in Spanish. It's been available since last summer. Oh, okay. The, the yeah, because website. Joanne said that, that bilingual materials were being developed. And they weren't ready yet. Well, oh, yeah. she's she's Thanks talking about all her marketing materials, and okay. that is still in process, and it's very close to being complete. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Thank sure. You. And also, the DEP website um, has the ability to. Um, it is unfortunately through Google Translate and not through like a, a, a per, in person translate, but the DEP website is. Um, able to be translated into many different languages um, at the top of the screen there's an option to switch it to different languages, including Spanish. Um, and that, so that will translate things like all of our FAQs and stuff like that. Yeah, the automatic translations are, are you know, they're, they're hit yeah, and they miss. Yeah, they can be troublesome. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kimmy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. So with that being said, it's it's 10.01. I, I want to wrap this up. So so thank you, everyone, for being on in, in today's amazing presentations. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, everyone, for participating. And we'll send out the recording and we'll send out all the information that, um, that we uh, discussed today. So thank you so much and have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Jairo. We really appreciate this. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.